You know, I've been thinking about this a lot lately with all this free time that I have, and I think I'm on to something. Now, bear with me when I say this, but when I start getting money, I don't even want a big house. I just want a gated driveway. Because I feel like once you've got a gated driveway, you have officially made Because imagine I'm just throwing like a house function. Like I'm just, hey, come chill at the house. And you pull up to my house and you got to drive like five more minutes just because my driveway is mad long. And you get to the end of it and you got to press the button like, uh, is, is, this, is this Xavier's house? Oh yeah, I'm gonna buzz you in. Just, just go ahead and pull forward. Like, you know you got money when you got people driving through your driveway. Like, yo, how long is this mother... Yo, I'm wasting gas. And I would make my driveway so nice. Because honestly, it don't even matter what my house look like once you get to the end of it. Because the driveway's got you so amazed. And imagine I'm bringing a girl back to my crib. When we pull up to the driveway, she gonna be like, wait, hold. Like, this, this your driveway? I'm gonna be like, yeah, this is my driveway. Ultimate key, yo. Ultimate key. Thank you for your time. This quarantine is testing a whole lot of relationships. And I mean young and old. You know, with younger relationships, it's the problem with not being able to see each other. You know, you can't see the person you want to see. So in order to keep the young relationship alive, you're relying on social media and FaceTime. But with them older relationships, boy, let me tell you, this is crunch time for some dads. Especially, like, with the barbershops being closed and stuff. Woo. You got wives and moms walking around like, babe. When did you get hair on your neck? And they've been married like 15 years and she's just now seeing Because the same way I said the younger relationships don't see each other at all, the older ones are seeing each other too much. My dad walk in the kitchen, he ain't even do nothing. My mom looking at him like... And he looking at her like, what's the problem? And she ain't gonna say nothing. But inside, she like, if you don't get a haircut, sometime soon. All I'm saying is y'all better start working out from home and learn how to cut your hair. Thank you for your time. Story time with Xavier. Now, I told myself I wasn't gonna make this video, but here I am. Anyway, so when I was younger, I thought it would be a good idea to boldface lie to my dad about something. Now, to be honest, I really don't remember what I lied about. That's not the problem. The problem is that I was like four or five years old when I lied. You can't even pronounce words correctly at that age, and I was trying to lie. So I go on about my day, and I get in the bath later, because I was still young enough to be taking baths. And when I came into my room, my dad was already standing in here waiting for me. So he looks at me, and he's like, so you lied to me? And I was like, no, no, no. He was like, no, it's cool. Since you want to lie, we got something for that. He's like, bend over. I'm about to go get my belt. And so I start crying. I'm like, no. Like, this can't be happening to me. Like, no, there's no way. Because usually when you're about to get a whooping, you have time. You know, like, you know that when you get home, you finna get whooped. So you got time to put on extra underwear, extra shorts. But I didn't have time. And I told y'all I had just got out the bath. I, my whole ass was still out. So think about the level of fear when you're about to get belt to skin contact. Come back for part two. Thank you for your time. So at this point in the story, I'm crying and my dad's going to get the belt. Something you should know is at the time, I had bunk beds and my brother slept on the bottom and I slept on the top. And he was in the room during this altercation. And so my dad finally comes back in the room with the belt. And he's like, since you want to lie, we gonna fix that. And so at this point, it's gotten ugly for your boy. Because I'm crying, I'm like, I'll never do it again. I promise I'll never lie again. I promise my fault is don't hit me. And if any of you have ever been in this situation, you know that siblings don't make this any better than it is. Because if my brother's not already laughing at me, he's just looking at me like... Pathetic. And so my dad says it to me one more time, but it penetrates this time. He's like, bend over. So I'm bent over my brother's bed, just butt naked and crying. And my dad takes the belt and he does that crack with it. You know what I'm saying? And it terrorized me, yo. I was frightened. And it was something about that crack that just sent a chemical reaction straight to my mans. And I just started pissing right on my brother's bed. My dad laughed at me so hard he didn't even whoop me that day. It was demoralizing. Thank you for your time. Things parents don't understand. Number one, okay, if I'm playing the game online, I cannot pause the game because there's other people playing live with me. So how am I going to pause the game if they're playing too? Number two, you ever think, you know what? I'm going to be a responsible child and I'm going to do the dishes. And on your way to do the dishes, your mom says, hey, yo, make sure you do them dishes. See, now I don't want to do them anymore because when I do it by myself, I'm thinking, you know what? This could be calming for me. But when you ask me to do it, now I'm required to do it. It's like reading, okay? For all of you that don't know, reading is just as addicting as Netflix is. But the thing is, I don't want to read when the teacher or my parents are telling me to do it. Because now it's not fun anymore. Lastly, I cannot stand when I'm in the bathroom and I've only been in there for like three minutes and somebody's... What you in there doing? Like, what do you think I'm doing in the bathroom? You th making a sandwich? Thank you for your time. I've got a question. What is it with the damn toilet paper? I mean, y'all are buying toilet paper like it's a hot commodity, yo, like you need it. And as far as I'm concerned, the coronavirus don't make you go to the bathroom. 
So what the hell are you buying it for? I mean, to me, it seemed kind of selfish because y'all seem like the kind of people that like to roll the toilet paper up like this. And then you ball it up and you use it one time and throw it in the toilet. And you know what? That's selfish behavior. Because you're rolling up three quarters of the roll and using it one time. And I can't think of any other explanation why you would need the toilet paper. I mean, because honestly, if you need that much toilet paper to wipe your butt, you might as well get baby wipes. Because using the toilet paper, it's not gonna get no cleaner, yo. You just need to go ahead and get some baby wipes. Cause I mean, from a health perspective, if you need that much toilet paper, y'all need to go on a diet or something, yo. You need to cleanse your system. You need to eat some, some broccoli or something. I mean, we're talking about toilet paper. Just thank you for your time.